RV Electricity, broadcasting to you from my lovely penthouse studios high atop Funkstown Hill. So, um, yeah, you probably all know me from RVTravel.com. I've written hundreds of articles there for the last 10 years or so, as well as, as my No Shock Zone uh, blog. Uh, but this is my own new thing here is RV Electricity. Uh, so please join up. Um, I'm glad to be here. Uh, just a couple of quick things. This this class, um, I'm doing this as a series of three 20 or so minute sessions. Uh, together they make up the one hour session that I was supposed to be doing um, at FMCA rally in Tucson last week. Sadly, that did not happen, but I'm here for you. You can watch this as anytime you want, as many times you want. And I will be um, breaking this up into a bunch of little modules later, so I'll be covering things in more depth. But this is just the basics. Uh, this is part one, and I'm going to be covering volts, amperage, wattage, meters, and hot skin voltage. And if you do send me any links coming in, I am going to be saving the questions towards the end here so I don't get distracted. At least that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Uh, but you can go ahead and sign in and say howdy hi. Um, but I'm going to try to push on so that we can do this in a reasonable amount of time. Um, one real quick thing that I want to let everybody know up front, guess what? I've got sponsors for this. Um, not big money sponsors, but sponsors nonetheless, which I think is great. Um, so this is sponsored by, um, all of these manufacturers make gear and services that I highly recommend. So I have Southwire with all of their surge guard products. Um, I have SnapPad with some interesting things we'll talk about in session three. Um, car generator, again, I'm going to be talking about possible solutions for um, temporary generating power. Um, Smart Plug makes a real nice series of plugs that I think are just great. Protang makes uh, the Thea fire protection systems, which I highly recommend. Uh, Techno RV has a tremendous amount of resources online. They sell these products, especially surge guard products. Um, I recommend them as well as Micro Air for their Easy Start technology. Um, but let's jump on in and see how everything goes. Okay, so let's talk about this volts thing. What exactly is volts? Um, and I see a lot of people getting confused about the difference between uh, voltage and current and wattage. Um, voltage is really what we consider to be kind of electro electrical pressure or what we call electrical potential. Um, and just like uh, pressure in a tank or pressure in a, um, a tire, um, it just builds up and it just sits there. So you can consider 100 PSI in a tire could be considered to be high pressure and 10 PSI, pounds pound per square inch in a tire would be low pressure, the same way in electrical. And you can see on the right here that the um, a high pressure thing has can squirt water further than low pressure. And that starts to give us a hint about electric electricity. We can send higher voltage electricity much further which is why your 12 volt battery cables are very short. Your 120 volt cables can be much longer and lighter. And of course, the things that are running around up above us in the sky are um, you know, hundreds of thousands of volts at times. And the key thing to remember is more pressure is equal more volts and voltage and pressure always tries to equalize itself. And so this is an important idea in troubleshooting. When you have a two voltages that are exactly the same and you connect them with a wire, in our case a pipe, there is no current flow at all. Current is actually just like water current or drops of water. You can think of them like drops of electricity. Um, so go ahead and if you, if you have a higher voltage source, that is higher pressure source connected to a lower pressure source, like on the bottom side of the slide, you will have current flow. And this exact same thing happens to us when we're um, in an electrical service. If we're only contacting one thing and we're all at 120 volts, no current flows through us. But if the one side of us is at 120 volts and the other side is at uh, zero volts or 10 volts or whatever, then the current itself flows. And you can see uh, volts do the same thing. Uh, if I have a, um, a light bulb connected 
both with both of the uh, of its wires to the 12 volt terminal on a battery because both sides are exactly the same voltage there's no flow this is all about flow whereas at the bottom if we connect the light bulb one side of it to the plus side of the battery and the other uh, threads of the bat of the bulb to the minus then what we end up with is a current flow and call of course we call that amperes or amps for short so current really is the flow of electrons i won't bore you with the number of electrons but there's tons and tons of them there so just like drops of water uh, drops of electrons take pressure to be pushed through so the the voltage is the amount of pressure you would have on a system or in this case the, the equipotential the, the voltage pressure that wants to push things um, and more voltage the higher pressure you can understand gives you more current for a given resistance and this all comes down to watts this is all about watts in reality, you don't care whether you have 12 volts or 120 volts or 240 volts or even 100,000 volts. What we really work, worry with is how much wattage do we have available for our individual gadgets that we're trying to run. So just as an idea, so your current times your voltage is equal wattage. So if you have um, 10 amperes of current at 120 volts, then you end up with 1,200 watts. If you have 10 amperes of current at 12 volts you end up with 120 watts but you need these watts to power everything in your rv hair dryers need perhaps 1500 watts microwave ovens need 1200 watts or so depending if they have a convection attachment or not water conditioners need or excuse me water heaters need about 1500 watts or so um, when they're running on electric air conditioners need 1600 watts while they're running and sometimes much more than that when they're starting um, and battery chargers, just to charge your batteries, let's say 80 amps and a fast charge, will take about 1,000 watts uh, incoming from the line. And that's what we're really worried about, is how much wattage do we have available. And it all comes down to um, your pedestal wattage. Um, and so it's fairly simple to calculate. Um, if you look at a, a, a 20 amp outlet on your pedestal, that can provide around... 2400 watts that is 20 amps times 120 volts is equal to 2400 watts that's how many watts you've got you can add these things up you can see that that would have difficulty running an air conditioner and a water heater at the same time because that would equal 3100 watts and you only got 2400 watts to play with a 30 amp outlet is actually 120 volts and that will have has on the order of 3600 watts because 30 times 120 is equal 3600 and a 50 amp outlet can provide uh, 12,000 watts. That's because there's 50 amps per leg. There's at 120 volts is equal to 6,000 watts per leg. And you have two legs. You have L1 and L2. So that adds up to 12,000 watts. There's actually 100 amperes of total power available in a pedestal. Just 50 amps maximum per leg. That's all. Uh, now, an interesting thing. Um, you should know, never accept shocks. Um, really, even if you've been shocked dozens of times from your RV, the next shock could be fatal. Um, I've been shocked a number of times quite severely when I was younger and kind of foolish. Now I know how dangerous that can be. Uh, so if you feel any kind of a tingle while touching any part of the RV, uh, you want to test it for hot skin voltage. Um, hot skin voltages can be caused by a worn shore power plug. Um, if it's, uh, if it's miswired, I should say, if it's worn, you want to replace it immediately. And it can in fact come from a pedestal that's miswired. We'll show you how to test that in a bit. Um, and you really want to get a technician, somebody certified to verify all your grounds and your, your RV and your, and your campsite. I've been a big proponent of that for 10 years. So the key thing we call, we call it hot skin or a stray voltage or a contact voltage. Um, and the danger of this is if your RV develops a hot skin voltage on it, and this is typically from a broken ground and some sort of internal leakage, uh, if you touch the door handle or whatever at the same time that you're standing on the ground and the ground is wet and your hands are damp, what you can end up with is a, um, you become the current path. Basically, you become the ground for the RV, and that current goes through you. And it only takes 30 volts AC to have enough current 
uh, to put your heart into fibrillation and kill you via cardiac arrest. So if you feel the tingle, take it seriously. Um, you know, I've taught about this for a decade or more, and you know, I've been a live sound engineer for um, over 50 years. So this is the kind of thing I am very, very careful with on a stage. Uh, I would be the guy that was in charge of setting up generators and power distro for major artists, and um, nobody wanted to shock them. We really didn't. So we're going to talk a little bit about pedestals and metering here in just a second. Uh, a couple of things that you want to be aware of. You should never trust a pedestal to be properly wired and grounded, uh, even though you might think they are. Uh, I get really suspicious when I see a new pedestal in an um, old uh, campground, because that means somebody's put one in, probably a work camper. Um, so remember to shut off the breakers before plugging and unplugging your cord, your shore power cord, because you don't want to wear the thing out. And regularly inspect your RV power cords and dog bone adapters for corrosion, bent pins, insulation, any other signs of overheating. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, basic voltage testing. I'm going to show you how it works. Uh, this is one of my favorite little kits from Southwire. Um, I like to have a, a, you want a little digital multimeter with a 600 volt range. I like the manual ranging ones, much safer to use. Um, I also have a three light outlet tester with this and a non-contact voltage tester. Non-contact testers, here's something that I pioneered um, about 10 years ago. Um, so you can, in fact, use what we call an NCVT, a non-contact voltage tester, to find a hot skin voltage on your RV without touching it. Um, in fact, it'll show it down to as low as 30 or 40 volts. I did a, an extended test the other day, but let me kind of show you how this works. I think this is like really, really interesting. Just one second. Too many things flying around up here. So here we have my little pedestal, right? And I've got a meter. Let me go show you something really interesting. Here is, guess what? My little micro bus. I've got my little micro bus all wired up into the outlet so that I can vary the voltage up and down here. And as I vary the voltage up and down, I'm actually creating a hot skin condition on there. Now what I'm gonna show you this, show, show, demonstrate this is this is a, um, a south wire, I gotta remember the number, a 40136N one of these little guys here, and I'll, I'll put all of the links later into, uh, into here. So these little guys, um, less than $15, that whole kit's less than $40. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and energize this now with 120 volts. Um, and basically all you do is, is flip the button, turn the thing on to it beeps, and as I get close to the RV, see what it's doing? It's actually beeping at us. That tells us I've got 120 volts. Now, I don't have time in this short session to show you all the various voltages and the various testers, but I did the other day on, a, um, on one, uh, another webcast. So go take a look for that one. And I'm going to do an article just completely on this. But you can see that tells us what's going on, that something s is seriously wrong with our ground, and we need to get it fixed. So let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation. So how it works, um, there you go. Um, basically, you need to hold your hand on a thing. You need to get a grip on this thing. You need to be standing down on the soil with, with it because you provide the earth connection for this. Uh, and when you turn it on, you just have to touch anything metal on your RV. Basically, all of your RV metal is bonded together. Your propane tanks, your tow vehicle hooked up to it is bonded, your axle, your bumper, the door frame, everything. If you stand inside of your RV, you're all at the same potential, and you can turn this on and point at everything, and it won't beep, even though your RV may be at 120 volts, but you could stand on your steps and lean down and point it at the ground. Um, well, this is not the gold standard test. This is a actually really, really good test that, that I've pioneered over the years. Uh, you don't want to become Flash. I'll show him later, but I actually have a demonstration I do in my live classes uh, where Flash has a, a little flash bulb head. Um, basically, these, this, this is what happens to your heart. Uh, children and pets are especially at risk. Uh, sometimes it's the owner's dog that when they step on the steps, they, they bark and they yipe and they pull back. 
Um, so dogs can sometimes give you a real good warning uh, that your RV has developed a hot skin condition. Uh, I think this is a test that you should perform on your RV anytime you plug in into anything. Uh, even if you plugged in there before, uh, if you have a break in your, um, your, your power cord, anything like that, that's where you get into trouble. Using a digital meter, let's just show you the basics. Um, this again is one of my favorite little meters you can get for less than 20 bucks. Let's go ahead and take it back up here. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is this, we're just gonna turn it to the 600 volt AC scale. And again, I'm gonna do an entire class just on meters and how they work. But let me show you the basics. Um, in this case, I'm going to be measuring across these two leads. You're gonna see I'm gonna to try to do everything single-handed because I don't like, you don't want to get two hands across things. What you want to try to do is just do a single hand. And so I can poke this in here and you can see I'm showing about 114 volts. This is showing different from this meter here because I'm on two different sides of the line. They're always a little bit different. Um, the right side here should be neutral so I should measure nothing over here. Over from ground to hot I should be measuring 115, 120 volts. Makes sense. Um, I'll show you here in a minute too, your 50 amp, make sure I've got him on, there we go, <clears throat> your 50 amp ought to be measuring, needs to be measuring 240-ish, um, could be 208 volts, uh, a couple classes on that I'm going to do, um, and you should always be able to get 120 volts or so uh, going across you know, the, the neutral and a hot, the ground and a hot, the the ground and the other hot, whoops, there we go, um, or down here, um, you can, in fact, um, an easy way to measure it is with something like this. You can put that hockey puck thing in there and then it may be easier for some people to measure. I think that that's a, 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 actually a reasonably good way to measure it. But to, let's go back and look at what we should be seeing approximately, and I'm gonna do an extended class on that later. Normally your neutral should be the large blade on the right of a regular Edison plug and the grounds always should be mounted up to be uh, code compliant uh, for RVs. Uh, there is no code for whether the ground is up or down uh, in the actual um, you know, regular homes, although hospitals generally have them up for a couple of reasons we won't go into. Um, a basic three light tester also does a pretty good job, at least telling you that the polarity is right and the ground isn't open. Um, it doesn't tell you voltage and a whole bunch of other things, but still, pretty good test. At least it's something um, for you to look at. And I just did a, an extended one on how to do a 30 amp test just a couple days ago. You can look at, book up the video for that. And you can see I have these triangles all over the place. Um, a 20 amp receptacle looks was wired realistically just like the 30. Uh, the ground should be at the top and as you're looking at it the neutral should be on the right in the um, Edison outlet down the left you can see it's the taller slot um, and the shorter slot on the left there would be the hot in the same way over on the right uh, that would be um, the 30 amp one the, uh, the the leftmost bottom one should be the hot and it has to absolutely be wired as 120 volts cannot be um, 240 volts or we get into big trouble. Uh, 50 amps, the same thing, except um, across the two hots, you can see I have 240 volts. Could be though 208 if it's hooked to three phase, different animal. Um, ground to hot one, ground to hot two should be 120 volts or so. Uh, we'll go into more depth on uh, how, what these voltages should read realistically, but anything much below 105 volts starts to become damaging to a lot of your equipment, especially your air conditioner motors. I consider 108 or 110 to be the minimum, optimum low, but I've been to some campgrounds where they've been 95 volts and that's really gonna tear things up. Um, yeah, high voltage, you don't want to go much above 128. Uh, I've seen some places where they get uh, neutral issues and the thing swing as high as 140 volts. But that again, that can be very damaging to all kinds of components. So we don't like that either. Um, and one other thing here, 
Uh, don't cut off your ground pins. Uh, some people in a misguided attempt to connect will break off the ground pins on an extension cord or they'll use one of those little ground lift adapters that you can buy anywhere for a dollar, which I think are like really, really dangerous. Uh, we don't want to do that. So do not do that at all. Always make sure you have a solid ground. Always, if, if you ever feel a tingle, stop what's, what you're doing. Um, part two, we're going to go into more uh, things on um, surge protectors um, and pedestal you know, connections and that kind of stuff. Okay, uh, I'm going to wrap this up, the, the, the technical part of this, and then we'll go look at a few of your questions. Uh, for more information, uh, in my Facebook group is RV Electricity, so go on the uh, RV Electricity Facebook group, and that's really active. We have, what, 6,000, 7,000 members that just kind of grew there in the last 10 months without trying. Um, YouTube.com, I'm going to be claiming my, uh, my actual, this, my, my YouTube thing went from having like 50 subscriptions last week because I was just using it to drop things in the test to, um, over 1500 a day. I don't know what it is right now, but it could be up there. Please subscribe to this channel. I'll be doing stuff like this every few days and big ones every week. I also have an RV electricity newsletter. Uh, right now you can find it on rvtravel.com where like hundreds and hundreds of my older articles are up there plus new ones all the time. rvelectricity.com, I'm turning into a library of all my other tons and tons of articles that will, um, so that you can cross-reference and find this stuff. I, I write a lot. I've been writing for the uh, pro sound industry for 35 years. Um, and so, I mean, I have thousands of articles in print. Uh, so I love to write. Um, and so this gives me a, a really good opportunity to do it for you guys. Um, and finally, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Southwire Surge Guard, SnapPad, Car Generator, Smart Plug, ProTang, Techno RV, and Micro Air for their support. Um, and right now, I'm going to go back here and take some questions, perhaps, for 10 minutes or so. And then we'll sign off, and then I'll be back on in a half an hour. Let's see if we can get me back up. Come back up. There we go. Um, somebody says, thank you. Uh, let's see if this works. Uh, Herbert Fisher says, great basic information. Thanks, Mike. Oh, you're very welcome. Oh, you're on my nose. Um, everything okay? Okay. Audio good. Yes. Um, yes, I am cheating because I am a pro sound, sound engineer. See this little baby right here? This is like the best DPA headset mic in the world. I teach with this stuff. So um, I, I love really good audio. I tried it with a bunch of headsets and man, I just hated what they sounded like. And I said, okay, I'm going to use the really good stuff. Um, this is private stock, like a uh, single malt scotch, baby. Uh, audio shoots, I'm hoping sound good. I have a few other processing things I'm going to do to it just because I can. And also I'm teaching the same sort of class to my students and guests at Shenandoah Conservatory. And guess what I teach? Audio production. Uh, let's see. Any other questions here? Hello again from Colorado. How is everybody doing out there? I mean, you doing okay? Um, I am in Funkstown, Maryland, you know, just outside of DC and Baltimore. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm safe and sound here. I have been doing stuff out of my own studio for the last several years. Um, this is out of, just out of my office. You know, I got printers over here and all kinds of stuff. Um, but I am going to be uh, outfitting my recording studio that's in the back of the house so that I can actually do full recording sessions, live sessions, which I think is going to be um, fun. Oh, wait a minute. Greetings from South Bend, Indiana. Guess where I grew up in the first few years of my life? In South Bend. Isn't that wild? I was born in Gary, Indiana, and then the uh, first few years was in South Bend, and that's where my grandparents lived. My mom grew up there. Um, very neat. Uh, almost forgot about listening okay so snoopy's jeeps new way of informing the r free world okay wow i almost forgot about listening to you you can go back and listen to this at any time you want that's the beauty of this um i don't know about this on um uh, on these particular things but uh my my other classes i would do for streaming for pro audio sometimes i'd be in 30 or 40 countries at once and I have three or 4,000 people all hooked up. That was kind of fun. 
Uh, let's see. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So um, presentation. Um, so I don't want to say anything nasty. Here we go. Somebody says something interesting. Um, actually, Herbert Fisher. I'll actually be doing a short post on the use of the non-contact voltage tester on our RV security and safety page. Citing you in your video. Excellent. Um, guys, please, I want you to support each other. There's tons of information going on out here. Um, don't complain that you've got nothing to do. There are things. If you have a skill set uh, and a camera, and you don't even need much of a camera. I mean, I have these are $50 cameras that I'm using here, pretty remarkable. And you can use your iPhone to do nothing more than this. Um, I think it's important that each of us goes in and instructs other people. You know what I'm looking for? Some of these show my wife how to give me a decent haircut because all of our barbers are shut down. I might have to go back to the days of the 70s when I had hair down to here. I would pull it back in a ponytail during the day when I would be building um, packaging robotics, designing stuff. And then at night, I'd let my hair down and jump through fireballs. You probably don't want to see that. I'm not sure that I can get enough lift over the mini trampoline right now to clear the fireballs. So we want to be careful. So anything, love these shows, great, great, great. I don't see any other questions. So if not, I'm gonna go ahead and sign off. Uh, please feel free to leave in the comments section anything that you would like to see me cover. I'm gonna be back on here in about a half an hour with part, with part two. And we're gonna go do pedestals and um, some more measurements and surge protectors and such. And then I'll take a little break, then we'll go back to part three this afternoon, I'll finish up. Um, and so, and like I said, I will then be breaking these up into tiny little individual sections and then spending, you know, 15, 20 minutes on each aspect of it. I could go on for years like this, seriously. Okay, again, once again, I wanna thank all my sponsors. I wanna thank you for attending um, and thank my wife uh, for putting up with this. Um, in what used to be my son's room, Alan's room. Uh, thank you all, stay safe, and I will see you shortly. It's Mike Sokol from RV Electricity.